Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'll be giving you a brief introduction to Fourier series. So here, if you look over on the right, then I have a function f of x that I have drawn. So as you can see here, it is a rectangular function with a period of 2 pi. So the period that we have for this function is 2 pi. And in case you are a bit confused about what is a periodic function, then it is simply something where f of x is equal to f of x plus l equals f of x plus 2l and so on where l is the period. So if your function follows this kind of behavior that f of x plus f of x plus the period is equal to each other then uh, you can call your function periodic. So here the rectangular function is periodic, right? So what Fourier said was that if you have such a periodic function, then what you can do is you can write it in terms of a summation, in terms of an infinite summation rather, of cosine and sinusoidal terms. So here is the formula that he came up with. So let me write this formula down once again, a little bit differently actually. So what Fourier said was that we can write this function, periodic function f of x as equal to some baseline term that we call a naught 2. So it is kind of like constant a naught by 2 that um, refers to kind of the mean of the function. And then we have a plus and then we write down the cosine terms multiplied by the weight. So we have a1 multiplied by cosine of x plus a2 multiplied by cosine of trice of x plus a3 multiplied by cosine of 3x and so on until infinity and then similarly we have the sinusoidal terms so we have b1 multiplied I'm sorry sine sine of x plus b2 multiplied by sine of 2x plus b3 multiplied by sine of 3x and so on until infinity. Now what you might notice here is that we have the different cosine terms with different frequencies as well as the sinusoidal terms with different frequencies multiplied by the corresponding weights and um, one difference that you might notice in the equation that I have over here versus the equation that I have over here is that instead of the cos the argument of the cosine term being n pi x by l and similarly for the sine n pi x by l i'm simply writing x here and x here and then 2x here so basically nx so in my case i'm just writing nx why is that so that is because this formula is a very general formula for any function with any arbitrary period so the period this uh, formula holds um, is uh, this formula basically holds um, for any function where you define the period to be twice of L. So this is a general formula for a function with arbitrary period and we say that the period is 2L here. However in our case in the rectangular wave that I have over here then you might notice that the period is twice of pi. So if I put 2L equals 2 pi, then that means in my case L is equal to pi simply. Yeah? So if I plug in this value of L over here, then I get sine n pi x by pi. So pi and pi cancel and I get simply sine and x and similarly cosine of nx here when the period of the function is 2 pi. However, for any general function with any arbitrary period, you can use this formula and um, by making the period equal to 2 L yeah so coming back to what I have written here so that was just something that I wanted to mention but coming back to what I have written over here yeah sorry let me just create a quick box and So you might think that why would one want to do something like that? Why would one want to write the periodic f of x in terms of cosine or sines 
And then you might also think, why would this even work? So the answer to your first question about why would one want to do something like this is very simple. The advantage of writing a function in terms of cosines and sines is that it makes the math easy. So if your math involves some differential equations using these, this for example, this is a discontinuous function, this rectangular way. And if you're, so the math can get very difficult or cumbersome. However, if you write it down in terms of cosines and sines, then these are very easily differentiable integrable and it makes your work or life easy yeah so that is a very good reason and secondly it also makes some kinds of analysis very easy so if you write down the um, this function in terms of a Fourier series then depending on the weight of the cosine terms or the sine terms you can tell which frequency is more dominant in your original signal so if the weight corresponding to let's say the uh, cosine twice of x term is very great, very um, large compared to the others. Then you can say that the this particular 2x frequency is more dominant in my original signal. So these are some of the reasons why Fourier writing a function in terms of a Fourier series makes sense. And the to, the answer to the next question about how could such a thing work, like how can such a steep square function or even a triangular function uh, functions be uh, represented using these curvy sinusoidal or cosinusoidal functions. So that I would like to make clear by showing you some graphics which I borrowed from Wolfram Math World. So I leave the uh, I leave the links to those in the description down below. So here, from the Wolfram page, here we can see that we have a square wave, yeah, similar to what I had earlier on. And here we notice that when we have a single sinusoidal term, so here we have a red curve corresponding to the sinusoidal term, then you can see that it follows a similar period as the square wave. However, it doesn't look like a square wave in itself. However, when we have more terms, for example, we have two, I'm sorry, when we have two sinusoidal terms that can be seen in yellow over here, then you can see that it looks kind of better. It approximates the uh, horizontal line slightly better, but of course it is not horizontal still. And then we have the green curve where you can see that it has three peaks and it looks slightly better compared to the yellow and the red curves and then so on. So as you keep on increasing the number of terms, in your Fourier series. So here, of course, ideally, it would the number of cosines and sinusoidal terms would be infinite. So if you have the infinite terms, then um, these um, the square wave would be approximated using something like this. So you would have a very steep function like this, and then you the wiggles would be very very small. You would have to zoom in very well, and as you keep on increasing the n, these wiggles will keep on becoming smaller. And then you will have a steep increase and then the wiggles on the upper end and so on. So this is how a Fourier series is able to represent such discontinuous periodic functions very well. And then you have some more examples for a sawtooth wave or triangular wave as well as semicircle. Yeah. So and yeah, so that gives you an idea or and you can even find a lot of animations on YouTube or Internet about how increasing the number of these terms within the Fourier series, uh, you can get a better approximation to the function. Now, there are still two things left that I haven't uh, talked about yet. So how does one calculate these um, values for A0, A1, A2, or rather AN, and similarly BN? So here, as I showed you earlier, we have the formulas here so we have the formula for a naught and then we have the formula for a n and then we have the formula for b n and of course again in our case since the period is 2 pi these formulas may be reduced to a simpler form where we will get rid of l in the denominator and pi in the numerator however the idea remains the same now how do we get these coefficients is a matter for another tutorial so in my next tutorial I will be deriving how one gets these formulas for a0, an, and bn. 
So it is not very difficult. It's uh, rather simple. If you just follow some basic integration rules, then you will be able to get these formulas. And the next thing that I want to mention is that it is not necessary that when you write down your function in terms of a Fourier series that you get both cosine and sinusoidal terms. So it can happen that you may only get cosine terms in your Fourier series or you may only get the sine terms in your Fourier series and the cosine coefficients or weights might be zero. So a n might be zero or p n can be zero. And how you can tell that is by looking at the graphs of sinusoidal function over here. I'm sorry as well as the cosine function. So here you can see that actually sine of x is an odd function. Yeah. However, cosine of x is an even function. So in our case, the rectangular wave that I have over here is actually an odd function. Yeah. So what happens is that you cannot really represent it using an even function that is cosine of x. Therefore, when you calculate these coefficients a0, an, and vn, then you will notice that you will get an equal to zero. Why? That is because the original function is odd function, so you can only represent it using odd functions such as sine of x. And so on, uh, you will get um, a, um, bn to be zero if your original function was an even function and that is why as I showed you earlier in this example for the square wave I only showed you a sine curve here there there is no cosine curve here so with just one term in the Fourier series you have the sine curve here not the others and a naught as I said represents kind of the mean of the function so in this case the mean was zero and a naught was also zero and yeah so that is it. That is all I wanted to um, talk about in the introduction to Fourier series. I hope you guys uh, found this useful and understood something from it. In the next few tutorials, we will be covering things like the derivation for the a0, an, and bn coefficients, also called the Fourier coefficients or Fourier weights. And also, we will be doing a lot of questions and exercises on how to evaluate the Fourier series for different functions, such as a triangular function or a square function or a sawtooth wave and so on so that is it i hope you guys enjoyed this video in case you did then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this thanks for watching and have a great day